Greetings and welcome to today's lesson. In today's lesson, we are starting on page 179 and we are looking at chapter 7, direct or compound direct objects. So we're continuing our study of compounds. We looked at compound subjects, compound verbs, and now we are looking at compound direct objects. So as we'll see, this is when you have one verb and two things or more, but I think most of the times we'll see just two, two things receiving the action of that one verb, right? So look for that as we read. Now let's read together. Perhaps you have heard the saying, less is more. If you shake too much salt on your french fries, then all you taste is the salt. Less salt means more french fry flavor. When creating or designing something, people often apply the idea of less is more, so they can keep the um, creation from being too frilly or fancy. Authors apply less is more when writing well-crafted sentences. The idea is that using fewer well-chosen words is more effective than using too many words. Arthur, authors often use compound subjects and compound verbs to minimize the number of words they use and thus maximize, make the most of, the effect of the words. In this chapter, you will learn about another way to do this using compound direct objects. Using them allows you to combine short, choppy sentences into one longer, smoother sentence. Your fries could get cold by the time you say, please pass the ketchup, please pass the salt. Instead, please pass the ketchup and the salt. So here, pass is our verb. What is being passed? Ketchup, direct object, salt, direct object. Ideas to understand. When a single transitive verb has more than one direct object connected to the, with a conjunction, those direct objects are called a compound direct object. In the poem, A Good Play, the speaker uses this sentence structure as he remembers playing when he was a child with his friend, Tom. Can you find the compound direct object? We built a ship upon the stars, all made of black bedroom chairs, and filled it full of pillow, of soft pillows. Right? Let's look at page 180. To go a sailing on the billows, we took a saw in several nails and water in the nursery pails. And Tom said, let us also take an apple and a slice of cake, which was enough for Tom and me to go a sailing till tea. Right? Now, did you find it? Second stanza, Stevenson uses three nouns as a compound direct object. Saw, nails, and water. We took a saw and nails and water. Right? Took is your verb. Saw, nails, water. The three complete all three complete the action of the same verb took. We took a saw and several nails and water in the, in the nursery pails. He did not write, we took a saw, we took several nails, we took water in the nursery pails. Why write three sentences to accomplish what he could do in one? Less is more. Keep in mind that sometimes a sentence may contain two or more direct objects that are not a compound direct object. For instance, Stevenson's sentence, we built a ship upon the stars 
and filled it full of sofa pillows contains two direct objects, ship and it. However, they are not a compound because they complete the action of two separate verbs, built and filled. There is one subject, we, a compound verb, built and filled, and a separate direct object for each verb. Built what? A ship. Filled what? It. In that sentence, the compound elements is the two verbs, not the direct objects. In other words, the poet is really saying, we built a ship, we filled it. Remember, compound direct objects always share the same verb, like this. We built a ship and a dock, okay? One verb, built, right? So let me actually, built, what he was built, ship and dock. One verb, two direct objects. Unfortunately, when using pronouns as compound direct objects, Many people mistakenly choose subject pronouns instead of object pronouns. This is a problem. Notice in the two examples below how the mix-up can occur. Mom called Tom and I for tea. Right? This is incorrect. Who is the subject? Mom. Mom called. These are what? Direct objects. But this is a subject pronoun. Right? So that's why it is wrong. We need an object pronoun to be a direct object. So here, mom called Tom and me for tea. Same thing here. Did, uh, did dad want, okay, subject is dad, want, is a predicate verb, Tom or I, right? These are direct objects. So here, we need an object pronoun. Did Dad want Tom or me to help? So you gotta think if it's being if it's being used as a direct object, you need an object pronoun. An easy way to check to see if you have the right pronoun when using a compound direct object is to drop the first pronoun, leaving the second. Let's move over to page 181, leaving the second one to test it. Ask yourself if the remaining pronoun is an object pronoun. In other words, for the examples above, in your mind, you would remove Tom to test the correctness of the pronoun, I. You wouldn't say, Mom called I for T. You would say, Mom called me, right? So here, our normal language, that one's easy for us to identify. Mom called me, right? We wouldn't say mom called I. And so when by getting rid of Tom and just using the mom called me, I can make, okay, that makes sense, right? If I said mom called Tom and I, mom called I, no, that doesn't make sense. The subject pronoun I is clearly the wrong choice. So mom called Tom and me for T is correct. Did, did dad want I to help? No, that doesn't make sense, right? Did dad want me to help? So no, he wanted me to help. So the object pronoun is the correct choice. Did dad want Tom or me to help? All right, so that's an easy way to do it. But also remembering direct objects need object pronouns. And we have memorized the object pronoun chart. And hopefully you still have that memorized. If not, you'll continue to work through that. Do you have, an, have the object pronouns committed to memory? Here's a familiar chart to use for review. All right, so make sure that you have this memorized. All right, so we're going to skip all the way over now to page 186, and we will complete um, this activity together. All right, so here we have some words, and we need to unscramble those words in order to make it into a sentence, all right? So, bone, table, rex, stake, gobbled, under, the, the. All right. Now, we could end up having a, a preposition, prepositional phrase, 
at the beginning of a sentence, but since we're unscrabbling it, we don't have to do that. So most sentences are gonna start with a what? They're gonna start with a subject. So let's put Rex here. Um, and we're just gonna write in print here. All right, now think about our verb. All right, so Rex is the subject, okay, more than likely. And we have this sentence right here, gobbled, all right? So Rex gobbled. Um, I don't see any adverbs, right? So probably nothing modifying gobbled in that sense of like quickly gobbled or something like that. So let's just put gobbled here. All right, so we got rid of that, Rex. Now, what do you think he gobbled? Did he gobble a bone, a table, or a steak? Well, he probably gobbled a bone, right? But what would steak be then? Well, steak's probably telling us what kind of bone. So steak bone. Um, oh, I have gobbled the, right? So let's scoot that over. Gobbled the steak bone. Right, so we don't need to use that much. And then now it's telling us where? Under the table. Right? Now we could have said under the table, Rex gobbled the steak bone, but we don't have to. All right, so let's try this sentence, right? Shovel, neighbor, back, little, brought, Yesterday, the, the. All right, so what do you think here? Who, what do you think is going to be the subject? Yeah, probably neighbor, right? Now, neighbor, we would say neighbor brought. We would say what? The neighbor. So we're going to need our article adjective first. So the neighbor. All right. Now, probably our, our, um, our, our verb. And we don't have anything that ends in an L-Y, so there's probably nothing describing the verb. So brought. Um, he's gonna bring the shovel, right? We probably brought the shovel back, uh, but we see here little, and little is probably telling us um, the neighbor brought. So we probably need the article adjective, the who brought the the that little shovel back yesterday. Right, and so the neighbor brought the little shovel back yesterday. You could have said brought back the little shovel yesterday, and you could even put yesterday at the beginning of the sentence. Yesterday, the neighbor brought the little shovel back, or yesterday, the neighbor brought back the little shovel. Right, either way, so a couple of different ways you could do that. Right, now you're going to practice this same thing on lead number three of page 186 and number four on page 187, all right? So you're gonna do your best to reorganize those words to, to make a sentence, all right? Probably be easiest to identify what you think is gonna be the subject and then go from there. All right, now let's analyze these sentences together. So now remember we're looking at compound direct objects, right? So that's what the lesson's gonna be about so we can expect to see one. Doesn't mean it'll always be the case, um, but we'll probably expect to see it. Right, so during the storm, the rain watered the flowers and plants, right? So what's the action here? It's a clue and it is watered. What's my clue there? Yeah, 
That's an ED, past tense phonogram. Now, what did the watering? The watering, the rain did the watering. Now, do I have anything that was watered that received the action? Yeah, two things, right? I have flowers that were watered and plants that were watered. So I have two direct objects. Let's use our greater than and less than sign. Hard to make all that fit in there neatly. All right. Now what is the doing? The is telling us which flowers, right? Article adjective A, D, J. All right, so there's my direct object. Now, do I have a preposition? I do. During. During what? During storm. Now, it's always nice here because if you have a comma like this during the storm, you know that last one's always going to be that, unless you have two prepositional phrases, right? But generally, if you have only just two or three words, right, storm's going to be that, to be the object preposition. This is an article adjective A, D, J. And what is this telling us? It's telling us when the action of watering happened, right? So when were the flowers and the plants watered? During the storm. So what kind of word is this? This is, or what kind of phrase is this? It's an adverbial, A, D, V, prepositional phrase. And the, it's just gonna modify the next noun. A, D, J, article adjective. All right, let's look at number two. Unfortunately, the tree branch hit the window and wooden bench. Okay, so here, um, what's the action that takes place? The action is hit. Predicate verb. What hit something? Now be careful here. It's the branch that did that. It's the subject. Now, who or what receives the action of the verb? What was hit? Well, a window was hit. So that's a direct object. And the bench was hit. So that's a direct object. Now, um, let's go ahead and find our conjunction. We have two of these. We know we have a conjunction. And here it is, and. So greater than and less than sign. Now, do I have a preposition? Nope, no preposition. All right, so let's go to wooden. What kind of word is wooden? Wooden is telling me what kind of bench. So it's an adjective. A, D, J. The is an article adjective, modifies the next noun. A, D, J, article adjective. Tree, what is tree doing? It's telling me what kind of branch, right? And I have the word the here, not article adjective. So both these words are adjectives, modifying branch. This is telling me which one. A, D, J, article adjective. What kind of branch was it? It was a tree branch. A, D, J. Right? So you're answering adjective questions. Now, unfortunately, what is this one? Yeah, L Y, right? That's a clue. It's an adverb. It's telling us how. It's unfortunate, right? So it's, it's sort of a negative because it has un in front of it. So it's not fortunate, but unfortunately, it hit those things. So let's go and modify hit. It is an adverb, A D B. All right, let's look at page 100. All right. So here we have this sentence at the restaurant, the waitress gave crayons and doodle sheets to the kids. All right, go ahead and try to do that one on your own. And then when you think you're ready, come back and we'll review it together. Go ahead and pause the video now. All right, so let's look at this. At the restaurant, the waitress gave crayons and doodle sheets to the kids. All right, so what's the action here? The action is gave. There's my predicate verb. Who did the giving? The waitress. Did something receive the action of being given? Yes, crayons. It's a direct object. And sheets. Direct object. 
So if I have two direct objects, that means I'm more than likely to have what? A conjunction. So join it together like that. All right, now do I have a preposition? I do. I have two prepositions. At and to. So let's go ahead and deal with the last one first. To who? Not the. Two kids. Object of the preposition, which means that the is what? It's an article adjective modifying kids. Right? And what's it telling us? It's telling us who or how they were given. They were given, how were they given? They were given to the kids. So this is going to go all the way like this up to Gabe. So this is an adverbial ADV prepositional phrase. It's telling us how. It's acting like an adverb. Now let's deal with this preposition. At the what? Yeah, restaurant. So object of the preposition. This is an article adjective. A-D-J. What is this telling us? It's telling us where the giving took place. And what kind of words tell us where? Adverbs. So this is an adverbial prepositional phrase. A-D-V-G-R-E-P. Right? And I think the only, oh, here we go. The word doodle. What is doodle telling us? Telling us what kind of sheet. Doodle is just a word for writing, so it's just a sheet to write on. So it is an adjective telling us what kind, and the is an article adjective, A, D, J. All right, letter B, go ahead and do this on your own and come back when you're ready. All right, so let's look at letter B together. The three children nibbled saltines and breadsticks at the table, All right? So here, what is the action? The action is nibbled. It's my predicate verb. Who did the nibbling? Children. It's my subject. What were they? Uh, was it what was receiving the action of being nibbled? Yep, saltines. It's a direct object. And breadsticks. Direct object. And I know I have a conjunction here. So let's go ahead and mark that with the less with the greater than and less than sign. All right. Now, do I have a preposition? I do. At. At what? Table. Object of the preposition. And the is an article adjective. A D J. Now, what is at the table telling us? It's telling us where the nibbling took place. Right? And so what kind of word tells us where? Adverb. So this is an adverbial ADV prepositional phrase, P-R-E-P. -E and then we have three and the. What are these two words? Yeah, you know, these are adjectives, right? Article adjective. This one tells us how many adjectives answer how many. So both of these are telling us about the children. A-D-J. A-D-J. All right, now letter C and D, you'll do these independently for your independent practice. Now on the lines provided, list the compound direct objects and adverbs from the sentences above. So from the sentence we did, what were the direct objects? Well, I have crayons. And sheets. And here we have what was nibbled on? Saltines. And breadsticks. All right. And as you do these, you'll find the compound direct objects in these sentences and you'll list them there. Now let's look at number three. Here it says, construct a sentence using the following string of words. Sky, soars, bird, blue, the, the, in. All right? So using those words, you can create a sentence. Now, you might practice down here and then write it neatly on this line, or you might just be able to figure it out as you go along. All right? But you'll do that as a part of your independent practice. All right, well, that's the end of our lesson for today. 
I hope you have a terrific day and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.